Hello everyone, I am Joel Joseph. Today we have here the Suzuki Balino 1.6. A small backstory to what a Balino was and how it was in the past. Well, it was a car that was launched by Maruti about 23 years ago. A car that was very desirable to own, quite expensive for its time. Very light, had a very responsive chassis, multi-independent suspension at the rear, which most cars don't have today. A very responsive 1.6 litre long stroke motor. A very, very well sorted mechanical package. Unlike today's cars which are so full of electronics, this is a car that you can live with and more than 15 years since it stopped production, uh, the car is still quite a package to drive and the mix of modern cars, you don't feel that the car lacks anything per se, it's just probably you know some parts that are not available at Maruti service centers and a lack of acceptance of taking these cars in for service. But the car is definitely a great fun package to live with and it's a, it's a proper enthusiast car. I can quite frankly say that having worked on cars for close to two decades that cars these days are lesser in terms of the cars that were made clearly two decades ago. I think the engineering philosophy and the willingness to push boundaries with no cost factors and with no major cap or emissions clearly made cars you know, from the 90s and early 2000s clearly a notch about the rest. Balino you know, in particular was a mainstream in Indian rallying for a few years and it literally was the backbone of a lot of serious rallying in the 1.6 plus used in racing a little bit and a lot of people over the years have tried to do various things with it turbocharge it do nationally aspirated upgrades and do all kinds of things but but the car quietly faded away and it's it's not so much around like the way you see a honda well one of the particular reasons why uh, you can't generally extract too much power out of this engine even globally this car comes with a g16b engine which is a long stroke version of the g13 and the g10 this is an engine which was very very specifically developed to develop a lot of early torque to give the car a lot of response at the lower rpms so you see this badge here which says smart eye torque system this was japanese acronym for you know a long stroke motor which had a lot of response at the low rpm and definitely it made street driving a lot of fun but on the tuning side of things the car had rather a slightly weaker engine the engine was actually built to deliver a lot of response and and keep it extremely you know as a low nvh package the internals of the engine is quite different to as to what you see in a honda or in most of the cars this particular engine has what you call a hollow crankshaft which is basically to reduce the rotating mass of a crankshaft to give it a lot more low end poke and response but at the same time the only downside is that if you try to really push a whole lot from it then you could end up having a little bit of a, a downside with uh, crankshaft failure because it, it definitely can't take a whole lot. Every engine is built with a certain philosophy by every manufacturer. Honda Stable are built to be pushed quite a bit. Design by itself has a lot of strong components like a steel forged crank, forged rods and a very robust block design and a whole lot of things. The Suzuki guys, they really concentrated in making this a proper city car. We had to work on this car understanding its, its weakness at the same time giving it what it needs which is a lot of response and a lot of power upgrade. Here we have an engine which is fully forged. We've added our rods and our pistons and we've gone with our bespoke tubular exhaust system which goes down into a Garrett ball bearing turbo, breathes into a fairly large fend mounted intercooler and then we've kept the whole layout very very simple. The standard manifold has been modified, the cylinder head has been upgraded and the whole thing is kept rather completely uh, clutter free and it's not complicated or complex in design. This car was previously uh, tuned to be a nationally aspirated build many years ago by us and the owner Rahul later decided to pursue the turbo road because Obviously, I had lived with it for 6-7 years and he wanted to have some more fun, so definitely turbocharging was the right option. Our goal was to not really make it scream and make crazy amount of boost because like we said, we build engines completely knowing the weakness and the strengths of what the engine is capable of. As much as we are tempted to push numbers with a 1.6 engine like how we typically push in a Honda City VTEC, we have to completely understand that we don't want to breach limits and we want to keep this package as bulletproof and reliable as as it can be this is a 7 psi setup i would say it's not conservative but at the same time it's a very efficient packaging that we've done we've not gone to any extent of pushing it and we didn't even want to really push it push comes to shove we could we could make this engine put out 350 400 horsepower 
keeping that reliability slightly under check. This uh, had to be an everyday car, a car that Rahul can drive quite as much as he wants to enjoy on a highway and take it to various places that he wants. So this is a fun livable package that we have put together. It's not to you know break quarter mile times, do a smashing 0 to 100. The Bellino to begin with was not even a car meant for that. It was a car that was designed to be a very nice commuter, a hassle-free car. So all we have done is taken the same exact philosophy of this car and elevated the performance from where it started. So this is basically our version of a Suzuki Bellino with all the elements that we wanted to improvise. Apart from the engine, we also have a close ratio final drive, we have a stage 3 clutch, light and flywheel. Of course our suspension because the stock uh, Bellino has a very sloppy, very softish ride which was very good for comfort and to keep people very happy when they chauffeur driven. But it's not a great car around corners because it has a lot of roll. Upgraded the dampers, we created our bespoke dampers for the Bellino. And then we also have our brake upgrades, we have pads, the lines, the rotors. This car currently puts out at the wheel about 210-ish. Very, very healthy for an engine which is not at all even attempted to be pushed to. And at the crank, it makes a shy over of 240 horsepower. You know, at any point in time, we can crank up because it's just a matter of tweaking the wastegate to just give it a little bit more and everything that we have uh, want to tweak we, we, we can do with the standalone ECU. It's a fun package and we didn't want to add any complexity. You look at the engine bay, it doesn't have a lot of things popping on your face, it doesn't have too many pipes and hoses going this way, that way. It's just very simple plumbing with the exhaust manifold and you know, packaging. It's got the battery in the same place and pretty much everything is in its original position. So that's pretty much it. The car is great fun to drive. We sure haven't timed the zero to 100 and quarter mile because it's irrelevant. But we know for a fact when a stock Bellino does about 13 seconds to 100, this is way quicker. I mean, way quicker as in there's no comparison. But we don't want to put a clock to it because this car was not meant to be built to put a clock on. So we don't care what quarter mile it does. It, it probably does, it at least would go three seconds quicker than a standard car or maybe more. And uh, zero to 100 could be knocked down to half, but who cares? It's fun. All right. Another point that I want to really stress about is, is the common questions that we are asked at. The first thing being how fast is something like this and how much does it cost? This is is always the question that people ask and it's it's a bit of a difficult answer to really give. Every car that is built is built to the expectation of the client. Every client is unique. Every client has his own expectation. In, in our entire history, we have never built two cars which are identical. We've built so many Hondas and we've built all kinds of cars. You can see horsepower numbers which are very similar, cars looking very similar, but it's exactly not the same. It's got a whole bunch of different spar delivery, the, the feel of the car, the response, the gearing, nimbleness of the chassis, everything is personalized based on what one would want. Now, when you want to make a car go as fast as you want, the first thing to consider is how far you want to push this package. Do you really have the right fuel grade to run a car if it's pushed to a high level in your hometown or in your city or wherever it is? Do you really have the attention to detail? To maintain such a car and then comes the affordability part of it and then comes the amount of customization that you want to do to to make it stand out from the rest an engine is a is like a pump it, it's a device that feeds in air on one side and flows out of air on the other side and in the process delivers power when you burn fuel 
I mean, you try to make horsepower levels at a at a very very high level. Obviously, the fuel grade is very important. Now we see that in a lot of small cities, you don't get the kind of grade that you want to really push a car with. You don't get a hundred octane or a ninety seven octane fuel in most small towns. So it finally comes down to what kind of a packaging you can expect to have based on your situation, your budget, and your requirement and your need of wanting to have an enthusiast car like this clearly not something that we can answer to people clearly depends on a lot of factors and this has to be a one to one discussion with us and it is always tailored and i think it's it's a it's a great package and i personally love driving the car so that's pretty much it